that's so exciting. That's, yeah. That's just, we know it, it's a great honor. And line out eight minutes into the match with um, Cole by oh. Brown. Sloppy, by take it by Neil Green. Green. Nice Harrison break. Cole looking for his forward. Got to have support, support with him. Forward. Presents the ball nicely. The Scalzi taking it out to Scannell. Scannell Ooh, just barely gets that one off. Into the box corner. Oh, staying oh, gets in a touch. nice bounce on it. Staying in touch. That might be an obstruction. Brown in, in trouble. Green's got to try and. Brown doing a nice job Brown. of recycling it. And kick directly yes. to touch. Directly. That's, That's a nice kick. That Brown scrum half, that was a very nice kick there. Yeah, Brown in a little bit of trouble with, uh, with the ball deep in their territory and uh, with not, you know, not, not a lot of men in, in support, but a good heady kick by the scrum half, brought the ball out. Since it was behind the 22, it went, it goes out uh, where the play starts where the ball went into touch. And so we have it just inside the 40 meter line of Brown being thrown in by Dotton, Chris Banks, about to throw the ball in. Bring the ball nice short. by Mike McDavid, yeah. flips it out. Larry Info White trying to get make that game line. A well, little bit, little bit slow in that ball coming out. Allowed the Brown backs to come up. Out to Scannell, Chris Banks feeds it to Dylan Jones, driving ahead, trying to recycle well, well to Scalzi again. Brown, back to Scannell, flips it out, out to, to Madison, Madison. Kevin Clark Kevin with some space. Kevin, very oh, dangerous. Oh, that's with a space. forward pass. Yep, he saw it. Too bad. Very close. You can see with the talented D1 ref we have here, when he saw that was a knock on, he decided not to run anymore. <laughs> he was just going to, he called that whistle and uh, brought it back. Okay. All right, lines, Fritchie and Bella on the sideline here. Yeah, Ten minutes into the match, to and fro. I'd say Dartmouth probably has his upper hand, although no time really demonstrating any real superiority. Uh, Nobody's really gotten close. No, 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 nothing consistent inside of either 22 feet. Just, just a couple of, uh, just a couple of, uh, you know, hits by Dartmouth inside 22, but quickly returned by Brown. A couple of close moves where a little bit of a better finish would have allowed us to get a break, but uh, that that example where Matt Robertson just just a little bit off speed, and just ahead of Kevin Clark on the on the uh, offload. Right, it's always that last pass, and it, the team needs to work as a unit. And uh, you know, that time was just a little bit of a. Confusion. And it can be hard for it can be hard for a scrummer with the speed of the wings to adjust where he wants to be. Here right. comes Jathani. He's a danger man. Oh, oh a break! A center. break from the number eleven. 11 a winger. Nick Keeling. Brown controlling, staying Recycling on the strong side. Oh. Up to the fullback, out to the center. Ryan Jones, number twelve, making a nice break, trying to be dragged down. Met well by his Brown pack. With the Scalzi on the tackle, here's Jathani again. He's and oh, and the breakthrough by the number eight Dow. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Well Brown doing a nice that. job recycling. Did we do, like do we have a turnover? turnover? Looks like Dartmouth turned the ball over that time, but called for a penalty by Dartmouth for coming over the top. We'll have the first penalty today in deep territory, and it looks like Dar uh, Brown will elect to kick the points. Couldn't tell who that was, whether it was on the initial turnover or whether when the when Quinn Cannell, who turned it over, went to went down the tackle, whether one of the Dartmouth supporting guys came over the top and went to ground there. I didn't see that. Either. So about a 30-meter kick, just pretty close to the center line. Should good opportunity for for Brown. Schofield, the fullback, and saw them in their warmups. He was making kicks from this distance, pretty comfortably. It looked like so. This will be a live ball. If the ball is not uh, kicked through the post, it'll be Dartmouth will have to. Oh, I didn't get all that one. Uh, missed badly right. We would call that a shank in another sport. Yeah, I've, I've seen that flight trajectory <laughs> many times on my Sunday morning golf outing. Oh, and Skiddell takes it into touch. So we'll have a 22 meter drop now for Dartmouth. Uh, Dartmouth must kick the uh, drop kick from uh, behind the 22 meter line. All the Dartmouth players must be behind the drop kicking it's like player. Parker Gilbert in the, in the scrum cap going to take it. Driving it down the field. Successfully kicked by Gilbert and fielded by Brown, bringing the ball straight up the field. Schofield Ooh, again to Jatani. Offloads to this to his uh, center, Jones. Brian Jones, number well, 12. Up by Brown. By keeping uh, the ball in short. We have number three, Epstein, Epstein not able to handle it cleanly. Knocked forward by Brown. So we got a nice good chance to get a good close look at the scrum right in front of us here, Pete. We'll see. Dartmouth's Walk able to in. tighten it up a little bit. So far, it's been much improved versus last week. Much improved. Yeah, you're quite right there. Front line of uh, 
Larry, on to White. Uh, we have Chris Banks and Matt Robinson. Matt Robinson at the loose head with uh, Shea Smith and Dylan Jones in the second row. Simon Greenberg, number six, the president of the club, Neil Green, number seven, and Mike McDavid, the sophomore, number eight. Put in by Dartmouth. Much better. Mike McDavid picks it up. Oh, a little, handling. little uh, confusion between McDavid and uh, Descalzi it, there. Taking a chick round, looking for support from the forward. That's too bad. That was a good scrum that the back three sort of spit away. One strong side. Chris, Chris Banks. Banks. Met immediately by Brown. Well defended. Okay. Looks like we have some type of advantage. Uh, Brown was offside. That's, that's what we have. He's giving the advantage here, allowing it to play out. Green are gonna try and do something with this ball. Dylan Jones picks and drives, Get well defended. Please. He says not enough advantage given to Dartmouth, so they're gonna come back for the offside at the initial ruck. Penalty to Brown for offsides in the ruck. So this will be a uh, opportunity for Dartmouth to advance um, the ball. Might have to use will kick. Looks That's like not getting out. out. He kind of popped that one underneath so a little bit. Fielded by the uh, Nice Michael. tackle by Neil Ball Green. by Neil Green. Brown quickly though in support. Recycling it through the scrum half. Leonard. Uh, uh, picking it up and going from the base himself. Not a normal play for scrum half. Ball came out, but it popped back in. He's calling a knock on. Yep. That ball popped loose, even though Brown were able to recover it. It was knocked forward within the within the ruck. So a bit of sloppy by Brown. <coughs> Let's see if Dartmouth can do a better exchange. They had a beautiful scrum that time, but Descalzi got in the way of Mike McDavid, who was trying to make a left side move or a pass, and obviously some communication uh, issues there. Let's see if they can get that cleaned up. Yeah, it was, it was, a, good, it was a good set scrum, but the uh, miscommunication when the ball was out, the ball came out. Oh, uh, much better scrum again. Oh. Not controlled by McDavid. Scalzi looking for forward support. <coughs> Taken off him nicely by the number eight Dow. That's going to be a green line out. And then driven out into touch. You can see the Brown player trying to keep the ball into play, but uh, driven out by the Dartmouth players, so it will be a throw in in favor of the Dartmouth. He's giving Green a choice. I think it was a scrum or line out choice, and they're going to go with the line out here. Okay, we're going to have a line out. It's too bad that scrum is very uh, nice and tight, much tighter today, but they're having a lot of trouble with the back of it. I think it's fixed that. Take by McDavid. Take by McDavid, but not really straight. The ball must go directly down to the, the channel. If it's not straight, it yep. will be Brown's opportunity to uh, either. Brown's going to take a scrum. Take a set scrum. They've elected for the scrum. Wind, wind seems picking up a little bit, the wind, yeah. Yeah, wind will be somewhat of a factor. It was a tough Again, west to east. Lineup. West to east here. Great. Right. When we talk about the boys running north and south, we mean up and down the field, not to east to west, which is really the uh, actual direction. Penalty to Dartmouth. I'm not sure. That was something inside the scrum. I'm not sure what that call is, but the bottom line is it is a penalty against Something Dartmouth. inside. Maybe uh, I'm looking to kick directly to touch, but not fighting oh. touch. Fielded by oh. Justin Zambella. Justin had a tough time handling it, and it did, it did fall to the ground, so that is a knock-on, and Brown will have the... Uh, too bad. That actually would have been uh, productive. Like that was not a good kick by the Brown guy. You're supposed to get that kick out of bounds. The fact that he didn't would have, could have been used by the Dartmouth back three, but got to handle that ball cleanly. Yep, Brown lucky with the turnover, uh, with this... Uh, the knock forward by Jim Bella to have an opportunity for a set scrum. Our technical support is asking if we're okay here, and I think we are. We're, we need some help, but I don't think it's anything you guys can help us with. Was it not on before? <laughs> oh, really? We missed the whole thing. Okay. Was that right? The whole thing? Yeah. Apparently, the, yeah. Are we on? We're live now, but apparently we weren't live until a minute or two ago. No score. If you're just joining us, no score been a pretty even match so far we're about 18 minutes into the half a lot of uh toing and throwing a lot of knock-ons a couple of forward passes have kind of killed uh, killed movements for both sides but it's been pretty pretty evenly contested brown now inside the 22 uh attacking from the scrum yeah brown has definitely come to play today they look they look like they've done well in the loose space and their their set scrums and lineups today have all been well, well organized they were a solid team in the fall i mean ball coming out controlled by brown out to the fly half. 
Jathani on the, on the scissor. There we go. Well defended by Parker Gilbert and Scannell. Brown, Brown looks like they're going to get it. From from Matt Lexington. Leonard. Pick nice goal. tackle there. Pick and go from the scrum half himself. Again, Dartmouth going to ground again. Not sure who that was. That play playing the ball off the ground, Dan? No, no, that would be on the tackle. The guy who's coming in is going to ground as opposed to trying to bind in on the back. you got to keep your feet. Yeah, it's, you know, killing feet. the ball. So we have the second opportunity for a penalty uh, kick. This is again Brown. Colin Schofield, the Brown fullback. Missed badly on an earlier attempt, but um, in practice he was making them from this distance. Good field position just outside the 22 meter. Well struck. There we go. Three nothing Brown. You see the flags up by both touch judges. The signaling are both inside both posts. And so we have a three, uh, three points three uh, awarded to Brown for that successful kick and the first points of the game. Three nothing now Brown. Just inside of 20 minutes to go. Again, Dartmouth hurting themselves with the penalties and the uh, the other errors. You know, uh, knock-ons, but two or three two or three penalties that really have cost us some, some yardage. Yeah. Bit of a sloppy start. That's still very much anyone's game. Parker Gilbert to kick uh, the ball back. We start the, with the drop kick. Picking it deep, fielded successfully by Brown forward, bringing it direct up, up the field, tackled by Giambella and Mike Davis. That's the Brown loose head taking that Micah Backlig. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Nice for his take. Brown taking the ball into with his forwards, rocking nicely, going strong side. Then now swinging back in Coming towards back the forwards. Coming back to the one Well of defended by Brown. The number three, Epstein. Nice wall put up by Dartmouth. Up to Jathani. I was told he's the danger man. Chris Banks nice hauls off. him down. Well offloaded. Ryan Jones, the center. He's taken down by Shea Smith and Larry Info White. Trying to turn it over here. Referee says play on. There was no Touch judge form. says ball is out of bounds. Be interesting to see whose ball this was. Little discussion there between the referee and the judge. Judge, such judge is uh, Captain Michael Burbank, but he can't uh, handle the uh, flag with his left hand, so it's a little confusing for the ref to see which way he was pointing for the ball. But it is Brown's throw-in. They throw to the four-man, oh. not controlled, all on the deck. But advantage to advantage to Brown because the Dartmouth guy knocked it forward off his head, but it was knocked forward. So that's going to be a scrum to Brown back close to the spot of the lineup. Dartmouth has not been able to get a consistent move out to their wingers, which is really the strength, the back three, Justin Giambella, Kevin Clark on the wings, and obviously Madison Hughes in the fullback. Uh, the, are the danger men for the green team with the speed and the ability to uh, switch back and forth, but we haven't really seen them in full flight yet. So yeah, That's absolutely right. The, the back three have been stalwarts of the team for several years now and part of the successful Dartmouth 7 program. Successfully, uh, successful scrum by... Oh. Well played by Neil Green. Oh, another knock on. Oh, lovely play by Neil Green. Knocked it, almost knocked it on, but then on the pass to Descalzi, Descalzi not able to handle it cleanly. Very nice take by, by Neil Green, though. Ball coming out of the set scrum. Neil Green on the opposite side. Uh, uh, loose forward was uh, advancing, stuck his hand out to interrupt the pass and then intercepted it. Hit a, an offload to John Descalzi, but just just in open space, these are the toughest passes to catch. Would have been a knock on by Neil, except he was able to, he knocked it forward, but he was able to catch it before it got to the ground. But then the pass to Descalzi just kind of bounced off his hand. So, very exciting opportunity for Dartmouth. We have a deep in the uh, Brown territory. This is about as deep as we've been, I think, today, Pete. I think so. We've so got calling a quick whistle. Maybe a not in straight or. Looks like he wants to have a reset for that set. So. It's Getting clear that Dartmouth scrum did a lot of work because their scrummaging so far today has been light years better than it was yeah. last weekend. Yeah. Much tighter as a unit. Last week they seemed to be splitting apart there as the ball was uh, put into the blue chain. Love to see him take it against the head here. No. Nope. Wheeling it. Yeah. Oh, so Scalzi picks up the number eight, but he can't stop him. That ball looked like it might have been thrown forward. And in fact, the referee agrees with me. Uh, it was. So now we have a green scrum. All defended by Dartmouth. This wheeling concept where they uh, move the uh, rotation of the scrum is a very effective defensive move by the, uh, uh, by the scrum. Uh, well, it wheels, your, it wheels your number eight in the scrum half right into your defending scrum half and allows you to, to tackle him. Plus, it turns him away from his back line. So the, 
the pass out becomes much more difficult. So he has no, no choice but to take it into his forwards and recycle through Let's it. Let's see if Green can productively use this. They've, they've been better in the scrum, but they really haven't productively used the ball. Had a couple of miscues by McDavid, a couple of confusions where he and uh, Descalzi sort of got in each other's way. But uh, let's hope that they've got the communication squared away. So scrummage for Dartmouth deep inside Brown territory. Probably their best opportunity today. Backs look poised, ready to go. Something's going on in the front row that the referee does not like with regard to the binding. I'm not sure what that is, but... Uh, a guy like Larry Info White's been playing, a senior, been playing for a few years. He, he knows a few tricks. I'm sure Matt Robinson does as well. I'm guessing that the uh, the Brown guys are not averse to Successfully a couple of things. Goes by Dartmouth. There we go. Fly half. Scannell uh, with Connell in the, in the middle. middle. Justin Thanks. coming in. Oh, nice tackle there. But Green should be able to recycle. Not releasing. Not Connell. releasing. Justin to get caught by himself. Yeah. Once again, the Green's penalties hurting them. Good opportunity for Dartmouth, but... Ultimately, poor execution. Uh, the uh, see winger caught, caught alone and uh, was called, called for not releasing the ball. The switch. Let's the see if Jathani can get it out of bounds here. Can he try to kick directly yeah, in? Yeah, he does. Touch. So we'll have a brown throw in just inside their own territory. Coming up on 25 minutes in, brown leading 3 nothing on a between the right down the middle penalty kick. The team really with the upper hand, the score is really indicative of the match. But Brown has had a couple of chances at uh, penalty kicks and has converted one, and that's the difference. Again, the penalty count mounting up, though, against Dartmouth. It's uh, definitely. It was imbalanced dramatically last week, about 25 to 4, and it's already probably 7 or 8 to uh, maybe 1 or 2 here today. McDavid oh. on the steal. Oh! Descalzi knocks not it on. He's seen his advantage. That's too bad. Not controlled by Descalzi, so we will have a scrummage in in favor of Brown. Continuing the trend of Dartmouth just uh, having possession and spitting it away with either knock-ons, penalties, or uh, uh, a variety of just miscues. So yeah, just sometimes just a little bit of trying too hard. So here we have a, a put in for Brown, uh, just inside their territory, successfully uh, controlled by Brown, coming up at the base. Oh, he should be offside, no. Nope. He, he well, Jathani tapping it to his center. Is that Jones or uh, Nick Keeling, I guess? Making the rain line. Driving, oh, driving forward. Driving nice drive nicely. there. Ball up, ball That's a play. knock on right there. Yep, knocked it on. Advantage for Dartmouth. That's a good break for the green. Brown had a had a good attacking platform going there, and then that, uh, I couldn't tell exactly who it was, just not able to handle it. Might have been that second, uh, excuse me, the uh, number six, Bent Lieski. Yeah. So put in near midfield by Dartmouth. Good, good opportunity in the midfield here. They can go successfully either to either side. Um, should be an opportunity to create some open space immediately. If they can see him strong. use this ball productively, Pete. They've had a number of opportunities. But just some, here David. comes McDavid. Another sloppy Madison, ball. Off to Madison Hughes. Put the flex to rub kick under the deck. Jim Bella in, uh, in, in chase. Pursuit, but that's going to be a brown. Touch. That's going to be a brown uh, this throw be a in. Brown throw in. We really haven't seen the Dartmouth backs put the ball in space yet. Again, it's at the base of the scrum, not to pick on them, but McDavid and Descalzi just having a lot of trouble getting a clean ball out to the fly half. Or uh, we've seen the ball seems to be coming back to the eight, just can't seem to get it out. Effectively. Ball thrown in, controlled by Brown. Ooh, that's careful. The deck. He almost looked like he got pulled down, which you don't want to do. Brown in control. Brown number five, Ooh. Dave Scheinfeld. Well tackled by Scannell and Connell, the captain. Next by Dartmouth. Recycled here. In control. Oh, penalty, there we go. Coming Question eight. is Madison, no. I don't think looks they want like Madison will elect to uh, uh, go for points here, it, it looks like. There's a little bit of a headwind against him, but he's, I think it's otherwise, without the yep. wind, it's certainly well within his range. So Madison will elect for, to uh, go for points, and if successful, that would tie the, the uh, match up at three all. 28 minutes gone. This is a pretty good kick. This is going to be 35 meter kick, 33 meter kick yeah. into a it's uh, probably six, eight mile an hour wind. It's probably a good 40 meter kick without wind, I would think. But it's pretty close to right between the posts. So I think 
and there from the table of hands. Well struck. Good height. Well done. Well done. Well done. Good. Talented young player again was uh, was the MVP at the at the World uh, Under 20s last year in the in the B tier, which the USA was competing as a result of the U.S. winning that. In part due to Madison's efforts, the USA has been moved up in the under 20s to the to tier one now for next year. Next year they'll be playing the big boys. Well kicked by Madison Field, the uh, start up by Brown. Here well, comes Matt Robinson, nice kick. take. Matt Robinson with a good take, bring it to Brown. Garvin in good support. Marianne for White gonna pick and drive pick it and looks roll. like, yep. Trying to keep these Brown forwards in tight into the pack so that we, when we get it out to the back line, we will have. The Scalzi uh, out to Owen Scannell. Owen back and in the drive up and under. And under. Good coverage from Parker Gilbert coming down along with Giambella. And Giambella, Banks, and Gilbert make the stop. Now he's going to recycle it quickly. Leonard out to Jathani. Out to Ryan. Well controlled by Brown. Keeling in the centers. Oh, and the yeah. tough pass. Excuse me, that was Dayton yeah. trying to trying to give it to Keeling on the wing. And uh, ball just bounced out of bounds. Tackled into touch, but also a forward pass. I think the ref will have a... We start with a scrimmage for Dartmouth. Well, three quarters of the way through the first half. No team really showing any brilliance uh, in open field. It's been relatively sloppy play, although I must say both teams have done have been earnest and, and hard rocking um, in, in the loose play. Just haven't been able to get multiple phases going. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing getting finished clean, that's for sure. See if Dartmouth can, can use this ball cleanly from the base of the scrum. It's really been a good take. Oh, Left no. Says ball is the flanker had to pick it up because it came out the side and the scrum half was right on him for Brown. Dartmouth still in possession, but not as clean. Here we go. We get nicely from the base. Simon yeah. taking it forward. Now you get Shea Smith taking it forward. Nice drive there. Well done by Dartmouth off a tough situation on that bad scrum. Descalzi out to Scannell. Here comes Banks, Chris Banks. Hurt. Hard runner. We got to hopefully know. Making his gain line. Descalzi recycling it to Scannell oh, again. Finding space. Looking to kick to open space on the far sideline. Oh, and ball he gets a nice bounce to stay in bounds. Chiambella right on it. Oh, this ball could be playable. Oh, well, well taken. Fielded. Well Madison taken by John Descalzi at the scrum half. Open space, but well taken by Matt somehow. Leonard calling. Scrum half electing, calling for a mark. That call play the mark. Is That's a heady play by that Brown scrum half. And the ball's behind your 22, and you kick it. If you can call for a mark, you catch it, then you have a few Gives start. it off to Jathani. Oh, almost a knock on, but I think he recovered it. Well defended by Dartmouth. But Brown. What do we got here? Oh, injury. He's hurt. A hard tackle by Dartmouth. Hard but clean. Yeah. Right into it just two guys hit him right at the same time and sort of... Uh, Sandwiched him, if you would. I, uh, that's, that's, I, I hate to use that word, but he got hit hard by two guys. Might have, might have knocked the wind out of him. I don't know. It might be worse than that, but it looks like he's a quick tap off the mark around. from Leonard. Gave it to Jathani. This would be a, this would be a problem for Brown because I was told he's one of their top guys, Jathani, the fly half. I definitely watching Brown the last few years. I think he's been starter since he was arrived there as a freshman. He's a Canadian player, has played at the under-17 level for Canada, so uh, that would indicate something. That's a pretty high standard of rugby. So the clock continues, so the clock may not be consistent with the game clock, as this is clearly an injury time. Yeah, referee is going to add injury time to the half here. So just three quarters of the way through the first half, uh, Dartmouth and Brown tied at three apiece. The wind blowing slightly from the north, uh, probably five, five knots, not a big factor. Uh, but um, uh, there's really a big difference from last week's game where the wind was a very yeah. significant factor. Well, we have a minute here. I'm going to tease something for halftime. During the halftime, we're, we're honored. Our Dartmouth coach, Gavin Hickey, has his dad over here, Dennis Hickey Sr., who's a former Irish international player from the early 70s. Pete's going to give a minute or two interview with uh, with Dennis during halftime. He's uh, over here touring, uh, visiting Dennis, visiting Gavin, excuse me, and uh, watching the game. So, well, fortunately, we'll the Brown player looks like he's okay. We'll all learn something with that. That'll be fun. So we'll have a restart here. Uh, Again, I think it was a wind knocked out of him situation. With the scrummage 
in favor of Brown. Brown trainers leaving the field. Dartmouth trainer leaving the field. This is going to be a Brown put in, right? Yeah. Brown put in. Now the clock has stopped, so I guess we have got to, uh, <laughs> we'll have an interesting uh, decision by the ref to stop the first half. Green pushing them off a little bit. Well oh, and we're oh. interrupted by the Scalzi. Off nice the base take. Tackled. Ball popped up. Ball popped up by Leonard to his number six. Down in quick support, controlling the ball. Yep. Liking to go. Here comes one of the second row. Oh, excuse me, Epstein number three. He looks like a second row. Big guy. Thrown poorly out to the fly half, but fielded nicely. Kicked. But Madison. There's an under-17 Canadian player. Excellent move. Now we have Madison Hughes on the Madison turn. Hughes. Gets dragged down, but I believe he scored. Try. I've not seen the ref's arm go up. Uh, there it yeah. is now. Yes. yes. Try awarded to Dartmouth. The referee looking at his touch judge, wondering why neither of them were close to that, right. <laughs> that score. <laughs> Brilliant uh, open field running by Madison. That opportunity set up by the fly half, kicking the ball hard but on a direct line uh, and uh, to Madison caught it in open space um, teamed up nicely with Parker Gilbert on the open side but uh, Madison in addition to be a deaf passer knows when to keep it keep it in hand and he ran successfully under the uh, uh, to the far corner and scored a try so that's now uh, five more points for Dartmouth that makes the score eight to three uh, there'll be an opportunity for two-point conversion from directly where the ball uh, was was uh, scored on the uh, into the try zone, so quite a challenging kick here for Madison uh, from the near or from the uh, uh, from the far line. The brown right winger Nick Keeling came up hard on Madison, but I think he came up maybe a little too hard and was uh, out of off balance and unable to make the turn where Madison made the turn past him. Struck just, oh, just just under. under. That's a heck of a kick from that sideline into All the right. wind. So five minutes, just uh, five six minutes left in the first half. We now have the score. Dartmouth for eight points with one try and one uh, with, not with one try that was not converted. One field goal against Brown with one field goal. So eight points for Dartmouth, three points for Brown. Let's restart now by Brown. Good crowd today here on the sideline, mm -hmm. Pete. Much bigger than last week in the uh, windstorm. Yes. <laughs> well controlled by Shea Smith, bringing it into his forwards. Ah, That's one extra move. one extra rollover by Shea Smith. He deemed he didn't release it immediately. You're allowed that initial move to present the ball to your team, but he said one, too many, one too many moves. Yep. All right, this is what uh, Brown does uh, very much in the first uh, two games this fall is they kick the ball on penalties deep into Dartmouth's territory, and then on these lineups they look to set up a rolling mall where the, uh, the forwards will converge and as a group try to roll, um, walk as a group with the ball towards the try line. Let's see what they do here. Nice take. And this is mall collapses. Mall collapses down to. They're going to recycle down. it. Here comes the number five, Shinefield. Not able to move it. Here's Bunny back to Juthani. He's trying, looking for the switch. But He's got his outside. number 12, Ryan Jones, coming through. Kevin and Clark defending against Keeling, the right wing. Well defended by Kevin Clark. Lots and that's Car Parker Gilbert also, also out there in the tackle. Brown recycles to Juthani again. Now your number three, Epstein, coming in. Now the recycle, Juthani, always in the right place. Fifth offloaded oh. to the deck, and now an opportunity for Dartmouth. Picking Neil up Green. Up. At the breakdown, picking it up. Madison's going to try and take it out to touch. The hard line kick. Oh, nice kick. Touch. Yep. Referee, though, is looks like he's going to award. It's going to be a scrum to Dartmouth scrum there, to which Dartmouth. is more advantageous than a lineout because we, we would rather have the possession. So that's uh, a good use of advantage by the referee. So Dartmouth deep in Dartmouth territory, but Dartmouth controlling with a set scrum. That's come looking very good this half. A um, oh, little less than four minutes left in the half. No team has successfully taken the ball against the head, but both teams have been able to disrupt the other side. Although I think most of Dartmouth's disruption has just been confusion between the number eight and number nine, uh, David and Scalzo. Referee McCluskey, not a fan of the way the scrums are being set down. This is third or fourth time he's asked them to reset. I don't know. There's something going on in the front row that he does not like. Well, judging from his profile, Dan, I think he He'll was a front row. I was going to say, he, he looks played. like he might have some experience in the front row, although it's hard to tell. Doesn't look like a fullback in his earlier days. <laughs> 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 All right, so Let's see if Dartmouth can get a clean scrum here. Another opportunity for putting. All being wheeled by. Wheeled. McDavid picks it up. McDavid pulls it off the deck. 
takes it with the quick support. Well formed ruck there. Yeah, let's the Brown, let's Brown set the defense though. Here comes Quinn Canal. He's taken down quickly. Brown nice quick. tackle there Brown by number seven. Brown again in quick support Brown going Hilgard. weak side with Chris Banks out to Parker Gilbert. Parker Gilbert on the Chris right foot, keeping it in play. Very nice kick there on the inside foot. Deep now in the Brown Schofield territory. to Brown, fullback, going to try and take it. Gilbert around him. He's got it. Now you got. This is Matt Leonard, the number nine for Brown. Clearly a very good player, Brown number nine. He's been everywhere today. Their nine and 10 are very yeah, strong. Their halfbacks are definitely their strongest players. Looks like a penalty against Dartmouth coming here, probably for holding onto the ball. An advantage for Brown. Yeah, it's a penalty against Dartmouth, right. Mm. Offside, okay, offside at, the, at that last break. So no decisive advantage, so the ref brings it back and, uh, for a penalty start by Brown inside their 40 meter line. If kiss kiss it with uh, uh, pass, he'll probably kick now for a touch for a line-out opportunity uh, deep in Dartmouth territory. And he does so successfully, and so now we'll have a, a line-out in favor of Brown, probably about 30 meters from the uh, Dartmouth try. try zone. A little less than two minutes left in the half. It's not been the best half of rugby, but it's evenly contested. Indeed, it's quite keen on both sides. Yeah. Really. McDavid getting up there, but not able to control it. He's calling that not straight, so Dartmouth's going to get a choice of a line-out or a scrum. Let's see what they go Election with here. They're electing uh, a line-out. Last right. week, that wouldn't have been their call. Well, no. But, but uh, with the wind much uh, much calmer today, it's a line-out, so much more of an op opportunity. There we go. Mike McDavid taking it. Um, free ball. kick to Dartmouth because they, they came through the line before the ball was thrown. The brown guy jumped up and, and broke through the line before the ball was thrown. They have to wait. This is a free kick, so he's going to take it out to Scalzi, out to Larry Info White. He's going to try and make gain line. Space, met immediately by Brown, but also with Dartmouth's forwards in support. Offloading to, it looks like, Shea Smith. The ball on the deck, back to a weak side. That was actually Mike McDavid Green. breaking through. Back Simon inside. Greenberg to Parker Gilbert. Get there, Green. Green, Green Ruck, nice support. ball. Descalzi has it out. Again to Owen Scannell. Quinn Cannell, Neil Green in the line. Dishes Justin to Justin Chiambella. He's got some help there. He's going to have to go to ground, though. Oh, the Brown guy, nice poach. Very nice poach by Brown. It looks like he's it's going to be a knock-on against Dartmouth. Playing advantage. With the call being uh, that actually was caused by the Brown player knocking the ball there. out of the Dartmouth players. So it's not the first half, but Dartmouth well, had eight points as a result of one try by Madison Hughes and one field goal to three points for Brown. Pretty good half of rugby, as I said, a little bit sloppy. A lot of uh, ball being knocked about, but uh, it's very hard for the team to get consistent uh, control of the ball. They two, three, four phases, but then uh, something happens, the ball's thrown errantly, the, uh, uh, there's an infraction, and then the uh, ball's awarded to the other team. Very much, very much sloppy. But it looks like we'll be in good shape for an exciting second half. Uh, Brown and Dartmouth both very keen. One I thing think Dartmouth will have what little wind there is in the second half, which can't hurt, but... Uh, yeah. Little wind in favor of them. Uh, really <laughs> Famous Dartmouth uh, rugby and football alum, Tom Conger, class of 62, checking in. So what do you think, Dad? How would our teams back in the old days uh, fare against these Dartmouth teams of today? I think you they know, might have to get another digit up there for the uh, scoreboard. Well, one of the things, Pete, is I think the fitness level these days is much higher than it was back then. Um, the conditioning level, the, the amount of work that the kids do during the week is dramatically different than, uh, than what we did. There's no more Welsh rugby on uh, Wednesday afternoons as they used to be back in the day. But uh, um, I think our guys with the, with the appropriate fitness level could give, them a, could give them a pretty good test. We had some pretty good players there. Absolutely. We'd we're gonna happy to, happy to we're gonna bring in uh, Dennis Hickey Sr., former Irish international. We're gonna put him on, the, on my headset and Pete's gonna just check in with him. This is Gavin Hickey, our coach's dad. He's here visiting. Dennis, welcome to Hanover. Thanks very much indeed, Pete. Appreciate it. I can tell by your accent this is not the first time you've seen a rugby match. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been around the block a few times. Yeah, so where, where are you from? And where I'm from Dublin. Um, and um, 
in Ireland, obviously. Um, I've been playing rugby since the time I was about six years of age. Uh, reluctantly, initially, um, I preferred soccer, right? Um, and let us say, bearing in mind the times that were in it, I was persuaded, in inverted commas, by the priests play you know, the, the in-house game of rugby um, by a certain amount of force. So I, I said, I'd take it from there. What has the Lord to it? It stayed with you. It's been a passion I life, love huh? I absolutely adore the uh, field. It's been wonderful. Um, I'm very lucky. Um, the breaks I've gotten, um, the experiences I've had, the parts of the world I've seen as a consequence. Um, and it's just lovely. I, I mean, I just love it from kids. I did a fair bit of coaching in, in, in the college, in St. Mary's College, at school, uh, uh, as was Gavin. And uh, then uh, Gavin's cousin, Dennis Hickey, the recent Irish winger. Um, they, they all came through as in, 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 in the cycle. It's a cyclical thing with Mary's small school. So there's some rugby talent in those, uh, so in those genes, huh? Somewhere, yeah, somewhere, very indeed. Good. Yeah, very yeah. good. What do you think of what you saw here in the first half? Uh, it's rather frustrating to, to watch it. Quite honestly, um, a lot of a lot of very good things, um, and I mean the things that go awry are perfectly understandable. I mean I take it for granted when you're playing from 12 or 13 years of age. I mean things like simply passing a ball is uh, is just it's built into you. Here it's it's a different thing and it is a skill it's an acquired skill um, kicking likewise um, but it's it's fascinating it's 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 it's, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful to see the game here uh, in, in in america right well we have a beautiful day for it took two very keen teams what do you think your uh, son gavin's telling the team in the locker room right now about the second i half? say Tight, tighten up everything. Tight, tighten up everything. Uh, lift the spirit a little bit. You, you now have the incentive. You have the incentive. You've got the the break. Um, but just, uh, as I said, by and large, make sure that your passes go to hand. That there is the support for the players. Um, because I mean, really, you could be another couple of scores ahead um, at this stage. Had, had balls been held. It really comes down to the team making the least errors here is going to have the real advantage, huh? Essentially, that's it. Yeah. It's essentially, that's, that, that's it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it, it makes it a bit more difficult when, when you don't have the, as I said, the, the, the natural abilities to do certain things that it can lead to frustrations for, I suppose, the people that, <laughs> that are watching it in, in certain respects. And what do you see about the biggest difference between the, um, uh, the game today versus uh, back when uh, old guys like you and I were playing? Oh. Or just me now, not yourself. Uh, all <laughs> for, for, for me also, I mean, I, 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 would, I wouldn't get onto a team nowadays. I mean, when you look at the size of the guys, and I, I would have a lot of worries for them, I must say. Um, I don't think the body was designed, no matter how much physical effort you put into it, the body was designed for the amount of, of hits that are going in. I think the scrums are potentially a lethal uh, setup at the moment. Mm. Uh, so I, I would be a bit concerned if I was a parent and just watching it. Um, I, 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 I'd be a bit concerned for my kids, for, for, for the young kids. Um, I'm sure the, the, the rugby authorities in their wisdom will, 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 will rationalise the scrummages in particular. Mm. I mean, you can't go too far, you can't eliminate them or you turn it into a rugby league game. Uh, which is basically not not part of this. Right. The, the you see, back in Ireland, is the uh, the social side of rugby still very strong? That the senior men they have a club, and it's uh, much like golf or tennis that uh, <laughs> you'd have here in the states, where you join a club, and that's where you do a lot of your social as well as your um, as well as sport. Yes, yes, yes. Not not in the same way as it was. I can remember the first time I saw a professional game. Uh, and it was a bad day, and it was Munster playing Leinster, and the guys walked off after the match, and they didn't shake hands. And that vision, it just let, let me the, the, it's still staying with me, you know. All right, but well, um, I'd be optimistic here. All right, let's be optimistic. Very optimistic. Very optimistic. Well, very optimistic. Thank, you thank you very much indeed, Pete. Okay, My pleasure left. indeed. I tell you, with that talent, talk, that talent in our corner on the sidelines, we can't help but have a better second half. Thanks, Dennis. All right, so back here with the president of the Dartmouth Rugby Board of Governors, Dan Kensley. We're just about to start the second half. And he, Dan, any uh, 
Any thoughts on Dartmouth for and uh, Brown for first half? Well, the sun half? is shining. Let's hope the sun is shining on Dartmouth rugby this afternoon here because we uh, the day is improving as we go, and I uh, like to see the, the side improving as well. Looks like Parker Gilbert's going to kick this off. I think, you know, we need to keep the scrums tight and just use the ball a little bit more productively. There's been plenty of ball. It's just as we've mentioned a couple times, Dartmouth has spit it away either on knock-ons, penalties, or uh, forward passes, just not able to use it as productively. I think they've had enough. They should have probably had another eight to 10 points on the board. Right, just a few handling errors and the mistakes. Ultimately, I think the team making the fewest mistakes the second half is gonna come out the victory. It did seem that the um, penalty count in the second 20 minutes was a little bit more under control than the early part of the game, so let's hope that trend continues. Here comes our referee, Paul McCluskey, re-entering the field, so we should be about ready to go. It'll be interesting to see how he plays the injury time because we had probably close to two minutes of injury time when, when Zathani went down, Jathani went down, and he did not add that on to the first half. I don't know whether he's going to add it on at the back end of the game or not. Interesting. So we're just about to the restart. Parker Gilbert here about to get the uh, whistle from the ref. It'll be Dartmouth's, um, Dartmouth's turn to... Uh, to, to uh, Advance the ball with the drop kick, must go over 10 yards, and then will be fielded by Brown. Well kicked by Dartmouth, deep into the Dartmouth. Matt Leonard, right. the scrum half, taking it back to Jathani. That's been a pretty consistent theme so far. Yeah, pretty good handling by both the scrum half and fly half of Brown today. That's probably been the, the signature to them as far as uh, uh, keeping them in the match. Two very good players. I, I don't know if Leonard's a select side player yet, but I think he has that in his future. And obviously, the fly half Jathani having played U17s for Canada, that's a that's a very high level. I guess it must be about 60 degrees now here at, at, at Tory Ford. Chris Banks about to throw the ball in. Going Shea ball Smith. Shea Smith, well taken from Stelzo. Now that's a nice Out. clean ball. Spun well to Owen Scannell, to Connell. Skipping. Madison. Got Madison out there to Kevin Clark. Going to try and turn the corner straight arm. Trying stay to stay in touch. bounds. Drops it in bounds. Well, well, well taken by, by Quinn Cannell. The referee calling that a knock on. Knock forward. I think that was, that was mm, one I I'm didn't not see. sure. Yeah, I'm not one sure about that see. one. Looked like Kevin dropped it behind him when he as he was going down. Well, that was very well played by Dartmouth. Advancing the ball nicely off of the off of the set piece. Unlucky to get that uh, line out call. If he's having a discussion with uh, touch judge and Dartmouth captain Mike Burbank. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Um, Michael, as we said before, broke his left hand on tour in Ireland and is not able to play today. He was hoping to be eligible or able to play in the Varsity Cup next weekend. I do not know what the status is on that. Looking at the cast on his hand, I would say probably not likely. It's a pretty good sized cast, but I yeah. heard it was going to come off this week. So what we'll have to see. It is a going to be a set scrum in favor of Brown as a result of the knock on by Dartmouth. Just starting in the second half, with Dartmouth had eight points to three. Uh, the number eight takes it. That's well going to be a knock on. Well Green's got an Dartmouth. opportunity, opportunity here if they can the use it. Space. Parker Gilbert picking it up. Oh, he elects not to play advantage, even though Dartmouth looked to be on full cry. Maybe he's calling a Dartmouth second knock on. Might have been uh, yeah. just warding it to Dartmouth as a result of Dartmouth's uh, knock on on the advantage. I thought that, that there might have been an advantage there with Dartmouth uh, out in the corners, but. There's definitely an opportunity here, deep into Brown territory for set scrum for Dartmouth. See if the green can get a clean presentation out to the uh, fly half. Scannell is waiting. Nope. Oh, calling for a foot up. Yeah, um, that ball came straight out. Oh, it's, oh it looks like he's calling it. Brown guy favorite. foot up, yeah. Favorite Can't kick this for goal, so Neil Green's going to take the quick tap. Right Dartmouth space, scrum. but Dartmouth is going to ruck over it. Opportunities both sides. Oh, Descalzi drops it. Not handling well. Oh, man, how many times? Descalzi looks like his hand, his right hand is taped up. I noticed that before. That may be contributing to some of the handling and difficulties that he's having. Again, okay. Quinn Cannell has typically been the, f been the scrum half. Um, he's in the centers replacing the injured captain, Mike Burbank, and so they put Descalzi in. He actually played very well last weekend, but having a couple of handling issues today. Yeah, it's tough to pick that ball off the base. Sometimes your forwards kick the ball out of your hand, your own your teammates' hands in inadvertently. Dartmouth with a push. Controlled by oh, the number eight. Oh, makes a break. Descalzi had him but couldn't hold him. Scannell pulls him down from behind. Well taken. Well supported by Scannell, but the ball's out. 
to Thani in the, in the oh. field opportunity. Brown has down. numbers to the number 13. Oh, well tackled. Tondries. Like oh, we've turned it over. Dartmouth. Green has turned it now over. For Dartmouth. Referee looking for the advantage. Not and now, quit. And now blowing the ball. Uh, Two knock-ons. Dead. Two knock-ons. Green knocked it back. Two knock-ons, but uh, br uh, Brown creating the first knock-on, so it will be a put in in favor of Dartmouth. We're just getting going. We're just five, less than five minutes uh, into the second half with the score eight points to Brown. I'm sorry, eight points to Dartmouth, two points to Brown. Again, we'd like to see a nice clean ball off this, off the base of the scrum from Dartmouth. I've not seen many of them. See an opportunity for weak side break here for Dartmouth. Calls it for putting it in not straight. Not straight but here comes Leonard on the, on the quick start. tape to Jathani. Pulling the ball back into his forwards. Back to his and number 13, Tondries. He outside center, but now staying with the strong side. And Jathani again trying this to get by Parker Gilbert. Kevin space. Clark trying to defend Keeling. Nice tackle. We'll see if they can turn that ball over. Not so far. Not releasing is the uh, call. Okay. The Brown guy was left out. He did not have support with the tackle by Clark and Gilbert. Madison's going to take this to touch. Good defense by Dartmouth. Madison Hughes kicking the ball directly into touch. Ball will be started up from where the ball went over the touch or out of bounds line. Right down here in front of us. Yeah, that's a seat in the house for this line out. Chris Banks, the hooker, will throw the ball in. And the channel will throw the ball in straight between the teams. The advantage that Dartmouth has is they know where the ball is going. Theoretically. <laughs> Good take by McDavid. Well Quick ball out McDavid. to Descalzi. Larry and for White, another knock on. Managed to, to favor Brown. Brown, right? Brown's got the ball recycled. Recycling it well Leonard has it out side. to Dathani. There's another knock on. Okay. Uh, Again. Unlucky play there. Just these little things that just seem to be the difference between very smooth play uh, by both sides and uh, a lot of stoppage for infractions. And, uh, the only consistency so far today has been consistently uh, mishandling the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part we could go toe to toe with them back in the, with the old guys. <laughs> okay. Speak for yourself. I had great hands. Ball coming out. And Another mishandle and nice Scalzi tackle by the Scalzi. Leonard, oh, on the deck. rucked over. Picked up by Dow, Brown. number eight. Back Tackled by forwards. number two, Chris Banks. is trying to drive over it. Looks Definitely like he has done on. so. Could be an opportunity for a coach. By Brown has taken possession. Couple of knock-ons. Green ball, well done. Excellent defense there by Dartmouth. Ball coming out quickly from the scrum. Scalzi quickly on the Brown scrum half. Taking the ball into ground. And then um, well, a good defensive uh, support by Dartmouth resulting in a, a put in their favor. Uh, just inside the bounce territory. Let's hope for another. Once again, we're hoping for a smooth ball out of here. The ball straight in. A little pushing before the ball comes in. McCluskey does not like that. He's going to force him to pack down again. It's a shame the Dartmouth scrum has much improved over last week in terms of their cohesion, but the ball is just not being produced. Uh, the way it, it should be. Not able to take advantage. They've won a lot of ball, they just haven't been able to do anything with it. Not so far, but they've got plenty of time left in this match, and uh, if they're getting good, clean strikes from their hooker and back to the number eight, that's a good up. That, that's a that's good stuff to build on. Banks and Descalzi talking about, no doubt, their cadence, their timing here, while the referee is talking to the props about the proper binding. So let's see what we can come up with here. That's fun for Dartmouth. Nice set by Green. Nice Good clean push. take. David, David. Not side. a great pass, but a nice pickup by Quinn Cannell. Able to, to break forward. one tackle. Driving through. Scannell in there rucking, something his father never did. Well, then they, he that from Blitter, his mother. <laughs> Parker, well, Gilbert. Parker Gilbert. All right. The fullback Schofield coming yeah. over. Oh, it get, gets ball, a nice bounce for three. Dartmouth. Picked up, picked up by Mike McDavid. No, oh, Simon, Simon Greenberg. Greenberg. Excuse me. It's an opportunity here for the green if they can handle it cleanly. Forwards, the, many forwards in support. Should be a quick ball. It is. Scannell Numbers quickly to out to Gar Gilbert. Matt Robinson many sending it out to Madison. Madison. There we go. There it is. Well I done. Touch, I think it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think the ball. 
deep in Dartmouth territory with big numbers. Uh, Madison is kicking it, ultimately uh, collecting the ball and uh, bringing it into the try zone. Couple of nice, points. couple of nice quick transfers there by Fly Half Owen Scannell and also by Matt Robinson, the prop in the line and support. Both of them able to get that ball quickly out to the to the way the overload was. So with that, with that five points, it'll now be 13 points to three in favor of Dartmouth. There's an opportunity by Madison Hughes now to kick for two point conversion from the point in where he uh, he as the try scorer also put the ball uh, down in the uh, Brown try zone. Looks to be about 10 meters off the far sideline, Pete. There. Yeah, this would be a this would be quite a good kick if yeah. Madison can do this. Probably. It's a 40 meter kick from that angle, I would say, close to it. Just outside the 22, but when you add the angle in. Yeah, plus he's got the, the difficulty of a little bit of wind coming across. Although, actually, the wind the is, wind is pretty, pretty bad now. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well struck. It's long enough. And oh, it's nice kick. Enough. Nice oh. kick. He really is a fine, uh, fine kicker. It's two more points from the converted try, and so now we have. Two tries, one of which is converted, and then one penalty, uh, totaling 15 points for Dartmouth against That's it, Dartmouth. You know, we've never been here at DRC about uh, point scoring in terms of individuals, but I would venture to guess that by the time Madison graduates, he's probably going to have scored more points for the green than pretty much anyone else I can think of. I think he's, he may already have. <laughs> <laughs> nice take by Green out to Gilbert. An open oh, space charge down a little by bit Brown. slow. But the ball's live and Clark up. and Cannell trying pick to pick it up. up. Cannell, Cannell oh. Pulling the ball. Bring the ball back hit hard. To his nice take off that by Descalzi. By Descalzi. Keeps, Keeps it in bounds. Space. Well done. Schofield, the Brown fullback, covered by Larry Enfo White and Kevin Clark. And he's brought into ground. He's going to recycle it to his scrum half, Leonard. Leonard looking to go strong side, finding his fly Sahid half. Sahid making another break here. But half catching the in ball some traffic with a couple of Dartmouth forwards. Nice clean out. Oh, but he didn't. Cut the ball in a very shallow back line. Immediately met by the Dartmouth players. Tackled, and then there was no support. And had to hold on to the ball, resulting in a penalty in favor of Dartmouth. Jathani looks like he might be limping a little bit there. He's a key man for the Brown team. Really a strong play. Very impressive at the number 10 position. That last series that resulted in the Dartmouth try was probably the best open field play we've seen today. Uh, ball kicked into open space by us uh, uh, off our yeah. Not releasing. Parker, Parker Gilbert kicking the ball deep in the Dartmouth territory. Um, the ball not handled by Brown. Uh, Simon Greenberg kicking the ball up in open space, taking it out right in front of the Dartmouth posts, and then a uh, quick struck resulting in a opportunity for a try in the far corner. First time again, I said Owen Scannell at fly half and Matt Robinson uh, with the quick transfer. That was about as clean a series of handling as we've seen out of the green so far today. Let's hope that bodes well for the remainder of the game. Madison yeah. looks good. Another one. Completed successfully, and now we have 18 points for Dartmouth and three points for Brown. So very strong last five, seven minutes, Dan, for Dartmouth. So Definitely good. picking it up. It's amazing how the game of rugby works. You know, in an 80-minute game, you'll have these bursts of 10 minutes or so where one team will score the majority of the points that get scored in the game. Fanny kicking off. Looks like uh, Matt Robinson's under it. A nice Cleanly take. Fielded by Matt Robinson, bringing the ball forward and then looking for forward support. Oh, good Done support extremely there. Well. Nice job by Matt. Nice opportunity for Scalzo for box kick, which he does successfully. Brown guys on. let it bounce between two players. Not fielded well by Brown, here's but they the, do have it now. Here's the center, Ryan Jones. Good runner, it looks to be. Brought to deck. Brown's re Mike, Matty Leonard trying to recycle it. Come oh, weak breaking side. a couple tackles. Nice now he gives it off to his winger, I believe. Brown's going to recycle it again. Leonard pops right up and back in there. Not oh, mishandled. That's an advantage to, to Dartmouth. They're going to have a scrum here to green, I think. Yep. Too bad. That was a potential for a nice movement for Brown. They had numbers out this side, but the uh, player, I couldn't see who it was, was not able to handle it. That was not the fly half. It was someone else standing in. Yeah, Brown line very shallow in the second half. They're catching the ball in a lot of traffic. It's very difficult for them to both catch the ball and then advance the ball. Uh, another situation of, of earlier where the, uh, the Brown fly half was penalized. Uh, this time this was not successfully handled, so it's put in an opportunity for, for Dartmouth. Green scrum, good ball out. There we go, out to Scannell. Couple of switches. Burst. Gilbert, with Gilbert with the breakthrough now. Successfully beating the gain line, well supported. Driving by off. Yes, I saw that. Third guy in. I think it might have been Owen, actually. Lost his feet coming into the ruck. Diving in. Yeah, got to keep those feet. Yeah, that's what the referee is saying. He's 
hand hand signals encouraging the green stay on your feet it was unnecessary too because we had <laughs> ball control spectator putting his life on the line to keep the ball <laughs> On the upper, upper part of the field. We'll take any opportunity for a little comic uh, relief here. You can see how they have this gently sloping hill for the Dartmouth fans, and then we have that small, narrow <laughs> area for, uh, for, the, for the Brown visiting fans. Well, this field is really designed to for the games to be watched from this side of the field. Well controlled in the lineup by Brown. And Leonard trying to throw it out, but saw the green players in his line of pass, so ducked back in. Now they're going to try and recycle it. They've done so, it appears. Dartmouth trying to drive it over. Met immediately by Dartmouth. Pick and drive by Brown. They're going to recycle it yet again. Leonard seems to be again. in the pack there. No, he's back up behind his pack now. Here he comes. He's going to get this ball. Be the third or fourth time now they're going to take it. Yep. Yep. Guy lost his feet, but still retained possession. Leonard now spins it out to Jathani. He's going to try a switch to his number eight, I believe, Dow. Got it back inside, met immediately by Dartmouth. Good defense here by Dartmouth, but but Brown staying in control. Oh, that pass was on the back foot, and number yeah. 14, Dayton not able to keep moving forward. Brown recycles it, but oh, there's a kick. Kevin Clark Reckler picks it up. Scannell, nice offload. Oh, oh, what obstruction called? I didn't see that um, obstruction called against Dartmouth. Um, yeah, that one is uh, has a lot of people on the sideline scratching their heads here. I don't, I don't know. It's all right. There's not many B1 refs uh, on the sidelines here, so I yeah. let the ref give, give the ref a little um, discretion on that kick, but not really. Kevin Clark able to keep it in, gives it to Madison. Is going to go to touch. Did not find touch, and as a result, it went. The ball was fielded by Dartmouth and then kicked directly out. Because it started by, the kick was behind the 22. I don't think we've seen any subs yet for Dartmouth. Dartmouth, have we, uh, Pete? I didn't see any coming yeah. in in the second half. It's the same team we just a couple of guys on the sidelines are loosening up. Tom Stevenson and Zach Fowler, a couple of the bigger guys, uh, look like they might be coming in at some point here. But. And Tyler Morange at some point. Will Chalkley, I think we'll see in inserted into the back line. But. Uh. All right, let's see if Green can disrupt this line out. Brown in good attacking position. Need would prefer to get a score. He's straightening out the, the ref, straightening the lines out, trying to carry it some space. 24 minutes left in this match. Brown. Oh, nice take by Mike McDavid. A steal there. Oh, not not a great pass. Cannell cleans it up, gets it out to Cannell, out to Tyler, uh, Parker Gilbert. Excuse me, who kicks it on deep over the head of overhead of Colin Schofield, the Brown fullback. Kicks it back. Kicking the ball into touch, it looks like, but no, not finding touch. Yes, he does, he find, does find touch. touch but opportunity for quick line Gilbert out. takes it quickly. Madison over to the open side Good of the field. field. Here comes Kevin, Kevin Clark, Clark putting people on side. On like side. Oh. oh, just rolling into touch. Kevin Clark not quite able to get there. There were a few players closer, but they were offside and wisely held off until Kevin was able to put them onside. So, so that ball was kicked into touch by Brown, but because the Dartmouth player caught the ball in touch without any spectators touching the ball, and there was no channel yet formed by the Brown team. He had the opportunity to throw the ball in quickly and did so, and that resulted in the kick by Madison to the far corner, and now a line out for Brown. Nice. Mike McDavid Goal. with another steal. Here's to Larry and for White on the end, trying to make gain line. Oh, a nice cut back. Well it's kind of without his support. Forwards. He's got to get support there. Dylan Jones is there supporting. Looks like the ball is coming out. Descalzi gets it out to Scannell. Shay Smith. Shea Smith breaking through. Well supported by Quinn Connell. Nice Scalzi out again. Skips it out to Chris Banks. Tries to break a tackle. Let's see if we can get the ball recycled. Dartmouth looks like sporting well again. Oh, Going look one way. Scannell going to pop Good kick it out. Kick. An open space. Field Ryan driving. Jones fields it cleanly. Kicks it that looks directly to touch. Right. Good pressure by the green there. Interesting uh, kick by Scannell. I, I don't know if he had his winger aware that he was going to pop that ball, but uh, looks like Chris Banks, our freshman hooker, is injured. Looks, looks like an ankle. ankle or a knee, yeah. That would not help the green. Chris has been a good open side player, although they've got a couple of guys on the sideline that look like they might be ready to go. Let's My see. guess is probably Zach Fowler goes into the prop, and then uh, Larry Info White would probably go into hook, but that's just a guess. 
that I don't have an sign of being broke. Yeah, they have Rob Bates, is that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Rob Bates. Another one of uh, Buddy Teven's uh, football talent that uh, this, uh, after his senior season uh, playing football, has decided to come out to rugby for the, his final um, term in Dartmouth. Pretty sure he's going to go in as a prop, and Larry will go to hooker if that happens. But it looks like Chris Bank is going to stay. Well, he's uh, hobbling, but he's not leaving. He's, he's got to throw the ball in. He's definitely not running at full speed. We'll see how this happens. Appears to be a very tough kid from Florida. I certainly wouldn't want to be running for him to run into me. I yeah. certainly would. Our well tech controlled our by Mike McDavid. Our tech support guy so told us Chris Bank as a freshman is the strongest kid on the team. That's a rolling mall by Dartmouth, advancing very the Very nice. McDavid's had and another good day taking. Off the base. Neil, Neil Green, Green well, well done. Try. Nice try. Great forward try from the Green. Off a nice take by Mike McDavid and a good spin by the entire Green Pack. Outstanding play. Tell you, Chris Dalton. Bank is going to have to come off, though, because he is still limping badly, and I don't think he's going to finish this game. I don't think that's. I don't think we need to see any, yep. anything more happen to Chris today. That was see, now this is going to be Andrew Bolton. Burson coming in at prop. Excellent play by the Dartmouth. Excellent play by the Dartmouth. Got the number. You got... A uh, line out in favor of, of Dartmouth. Well controlled nice again by McDavid. Well, it's been night, night and day straight. on those lines. Not straight, oh. though. Unfortunately, it's not. We're going to sort out what's going on here with the green positioning. Quinn Canal. It does appear Quinn has gone back to scrum half. Yeah, we have Garrett Wymore then going into outside, outside center. Inside center. Plus to outside right. center. Right. Scouts are coming off. I don't know whether the scouts will get hurt or uh, they just decided to shift them off. Green pushing the scrum Good off now. Push by Dartmouth. Brown number eight tries to take it, but he's just now getting yeah. back to where the ball was put yeah, in. Looking back to his forwards. But not releasing. Called for not releasing. That's what happens when the scrum moves forward. Well, good things happen for That's the green. Exactly right. Good things happen when you're advancing forward. Nice push by the green scrum there. Much different half you say here, Dennis, huh? <laughs> Must be a different half this year. Gavin must have had some thoughts for those boys at halftime. Gavin must have had some good thoughts for those boys at halftime. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a tale of two halves here. Kicked on the penalty by Madison Hughes in directly into touch. And so we'll have a line out for Dartmouth into Brown territory. It helps so much when you're able to hold on to the ball, too, you know. First half, we dro dropped every other ball that we handled. Yeah. Maybe that's what Gavin said, keep the control of the <laughs> Stop ball. Stop dropping it. Stop dropping it. <laughs> <laughs> so simple. Boys All right, listening. Simon Greenberg throwing in now, replacing Banks. Simon's the president of the club. Oh, oh looked like control. a good throw. Knocked forward by the green. It's going to be Brown's ball. Nice tackle there. Nice tackle. Dark, 17, that's advantage. Burson just came in. Brown with advantage. And the ref stopping play on the knock on from the line out. So we'll no advantage was gained. Burson looks like he's uh, put quite a knock on the Brown number seven, Hilgart. He's limping a little bit. That was a heck of a tackle. Yeah, these uh, with the substitution rules now, five substitutions per game. You get the opportunity for real impact substitutes. People come in now and the make a big Dartmouth impact. Now the Dartmouth scrum is different. Now Burson's at loose head, unlike the last scrum. And they did move Larry Ann White into hooker, as I expected. Larry's a very experienced front row player, can play all three positions. And last week he played loose forward for the second half, too. Right. Not a tidy scrum. Dartmouth scrum starting to exert a little bit of dominance here late in the game. I don't know whether it's the addition of uh, of the person who's yeah, you a pretty good sized player, but uh, you kind of see that when the green guys were all standing there waiting for the brown boys to get off the ground. That uh, Dartmouth starting to exercise some real control. Big improvement from last week in the scrums. Absolutely. Big improvement. All right, so 66 minutes into the match, it'll again be a brown put in. Oh, put that in. one collapsed. He's, well, Burson is not quick, a very experienced quick player. Quick ball elected by Brown out to the fly half. The far side of the field. He's met, got by a, he's met by Dartmouth. Offside winger Dayton coming in there, number 14. Oh, oh, this is pushed into touch. This is 11 Keeling, the onside wing. Nice drive tackle. Excellent defense. Looks like we have uh, Will Chalkley is in at the left wing, replacing Kevin Clark. I did not see that happen. Number 22, Will Chalkley, who's a sophomore. 
from Virginia, I believe. Right. Excellent defense there. DC, excuse me, Washington, D.C. Good player, very good sevens player, Chalkley. Tommy Greenberg throwing to Mike McDavid, controlled again, nicely. Quinn Cannell out to Larry Antro White, Larry we're gonna, gonna try and set it. Here it goes, oh, nice movement move. by the front row and into Larry the Daniel second Green. row, yeah. Start with some good support for quick ball. Quick gain line there, Scannell going strong side. Sending Gilbert burst, away. On a burst, opportunity for an offload. No, keeping the ball. Yeah, that would have been an unwise offload. That was too late into the tackle there. Mcdavid driving forward. Recycle back. Looks like Dylan Jones is going to try and drive it forward. Breaks a tackle. Driving, well breaks there. another tackle. Well He's driving. Very close. To oh, the lovely, That's lovely. Another try. Well done by Dylan Jones. Great, great 20 odd meter run and then a very nice dish off the ground quickly to Madison using support. That's great stuff by a second row. Two weeks in a row with a long, long uh, try producing run for Dylan. Multiple phases, creating opportunity for Dylan on a pick and off the base. Um, very difficult person to tackle one on one. And Broke a space. couple tackles. Uh, he's how big is he? About 240. As big as a house. Yeah. He is one big, big man. I saw him at the dinner, um, and I was chiding because he was on his off term in the winter, and he said he hadn't been working out as hard. And I, uh, assistant coach James Willex was venturing that he might be 260 or 270 at that point. I think. Between the tour and training, he's probably shed a few of those pounds. Good size, good. but he came with real pace. But he Looks like Dylan is coming off. The uh, is well in control of this match now with that converted try, leading 32 points to three with just about 10 minutes left. Dylan coming off and Robert Bath, or Bath is, how's that pronounced? Yeah. Bate, Bate, Bate. Bate is coming on. He's another one of, uh, a foot ex-footballer, right? Right, one of part of Buddy Teeman's football program. It's his final season at, uh, final Semester at Dartmouth uh, like to come out for the DRFC. Nice to see. On the restart, ball kicked. Quinn Cannell, nice and take. Handled by Quinn Cannell. Up to skin Cannell kicked into open space. Cut by the wing of Brown. Keeling, Kansas number 11. Forward. Nice tackle by Tyler Moran. Gil Garrett Weimer, excuse me. Driving him forward, but Brown able to recycle. Leonard giving it to his number six. Pat Lieski, the flanker. Now to back leg, the Just been informed that Gavin's going to try and have as many seniors as possible on the field to finish the game. So yeah, that's great. This is that's why he's so taking some of the younger players out. This is the final uh, 15's home game. Opportunity for the seniors to be playing on Corey Ford until they can come back from the alumni match. Final 15's home game for all the seniors. Yeah. That's correct. That's very exciting. Right now they look like they're going out in good style with 70 minutes gone. Um, this is a brown line out though in attacking zone about looks like about five meters out of the we'll try zone. For Brown here to do a rolling ball, similar to what Dartmouth executed successfully. Uh, a few minutes back Keep your eye on try. Mike McDavid at the number two for Dartmouth. He's been successful at stealing the ball. We'll see if he's able to do it yet again. This would be a critical position. Nope. Well taken by Brown. Here goes the attempt the at the rolling mall. Down ball goes to ground. Larry Anfo White poached. Well done. Dartmouth now in possession. Oh, Dartmouth players call for going over. I think that was number 17, Burson, who's again an inexperienced player, would not have, probably would not have understood that he's got to stay on his feet coming in. Brown taking it quickly, Matt Leonard. The run, but met immediately by Dartmouth. Brown still in control. Well recycled to the number eight. It's all back to the forwards. Brown still in control. Picking up the base. Again Pick and drive again base. from back leg to number one. Driven back. Oh. Leonard spins it out yeah. to Jathani. He's no, got a break. Oh. Gets the ball in. Oh, oh and a missed tackle there by Scannell, unfortunately. Brown on the line. Very close to the try line. Picking the ball off the base. Brown hammering away. Green defending. Looks oh, it looks like a knock on there. Advantage yes. Being a a knock on. Knock on against Brown. That was a knock on created in the tackle. I could not see who made that tackle, but it's a good hit by Dartmouth jarring that ball loose. That's exactly right. The Brown player trying to advance the ball off, off the base. It cuts the ball down. The tackle's hard by Dartmouth, causing the ball to be. Uh, Released by the Brown player before he could put downward pressure on the ball and have the try awarded. So we'll have a five meter scrum now as a result of that. Got about uh, seven and a half forward. minutes left, and we don't know how the ref is going to play that 
kind of probably two-ish minutes of injury time when Jathani was hurt in the first half, but we'll see how that plays out. Dartmouth happy to have the ball here after defending for the last four or five minutes uh, in their close in their own end. Need to make a clean uh, delivery of the scrum uh, of the ball at the space of the scrum and get it out of there. Scannell moving his back line around. Dartmouth definitely not out of trouble here, but uh, looks like uh, looks like they might have positioned Gilbert in there to take the to take the kick. Might be a little quicker on his release of the kick than uh, Owen is. And you've got um, Garrett, right in, Garrett in, uh, right in front of the uh, number eight. And then Owen behind him and Parker right next to the goal post. Oh, it's the wrong guy. It's Garrett. Oh, so that's... With David throwing the ball off the base, looking for help from his forwards. Oh, it looks like the reason they put Garrett in there was to be in there to drive immediately to, to, to get an extra help. rucker in there. Kicking the ball. Japani covers play. it, the fly half of Brown. Full Flips it out down. to his fullback Schofield. Met by Dartmouth. Chiambella right on him with the tackle. Brown forwards there. Very game played by Brown. This is Backlig, the number one, who's had a good game. Good runner appears to be. Larry Info White poaching, poaching it at the tackle again, 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 third or fourth time. There was no, there was a tackle, but there was no rock. Shea Smith picks the ball up with no scrum half there and drives it. Now Dylan picking the ball up. This now time Dylan's that's out of the game now. That's uh, that's either Burson or that's Burson, Burson with the white right, tape on his me. head. Yeah. Canel, Canel out to Canel kicking the ball up and under. Chiambella chasing it. Brown Schofield, the fullback, takes it. Now he's giving it to Keeling, the winger. Good defense by Dartmouth. Could be an opportunity for a turnover here. Looks like they have done so successfully. Nope. The Brown okay. scrum half again, poaching that ball. Nice play. He's had a hell of a game. Number nine for Brown, very solid player. Again, recycling it out to his control the ball. fly half. He's looking, looking for the break, for and he makes the break. He beats McDavid, pops oh, it over it to Madison, and uses his head. Ball. Will Chockley, Chockley, good speed, catches him from behind. Will Green's going to try and poach this ball. Looks like they've successfully done so. Here's Chiambella kicking it out to touch. No, it doesn't Not get it to touch. touch. Oh, covered nicely by number 14, Tom Dayton for Brown. Madison Hughes takes calling it and the calls mark. the mark, settling it down. Brilliant play by the Brown fly half, but uh, unfortunately, Tremendous play. unfortunately for him, Wilson Chockley was on the field. Wilson's one of the fastest players. Will Chockley showing some Dartmouth really team. good top end speed there, catching him from behind. And nice then in that tackle. situation where the Brown player was in open space by himself, he was really didn't have any support from his players, so he was uh, you know, not in a position to control the ball. We got some real celebrities now have come out to watch this match here. Former Dartmouth captain Tom Reinhardt, 76 here. Honored yeah. to see him. With the legends. With his daughter, current undergrad. Look at the so Neil Green coming off, Parker Gilbert coming mm -hmm. off, Mike McDavid coming off. He's putting his seniors in. Those are all underclassmen who have just come off the field. Um, let's see who we got in there replacing them. What number is he? Tom Steventon went in, the big uh, block wearing the red headgear. Well kicked by Madison, directly into touch from the penalty. Tom is a, Tom a freshman or a sophomore? Tom Stevenson. Stevenson. The big, the big New Zealand kid. Not, not a big deal. Oh, he's a yeah. freshman. Yeah, he's oh, right. that's what I thought. Very well, easily identifiable, the biggest guy on the field, but also that shot. Number 20, guy. Mike Urbach, who's a junior, uh, in at one of the flankers. Brown throw in on the line out, controlled by Brown. <laughs> on the deck. Ball coming out. Backlick again, and number base. one driving forward. Recycled good. by Leonard to Zathani. Zathani. Skips, skips his center coming in. He's got the fullback in the line here, Schofield. Brown in open space. With Keeling, the winger, number 11 on his outside. Oh. Not releasing it quickly enough. The Keeling went into the tackle, didn't have much support there with him, and held on to it just a couple of counts too long. The challenge of moving in open space is that you, you're there without any support and penalized for not releasing the ball. Once again, Madison Hughes kicking the ball deep into touch. But we'll have a restart with a line out by Dartmouth. Just a few minutes left to go in the match. Dartmouth comfortably ahead, 32 points to three. I think we might have had Zach Fowler into the game, number 17, no. 17 is Burson, sorry, he was in earlier, 18 is Faith. 
The okay. Dartmouth pack has gotten bigger with the subs. With the they haven't got any I'm not sure who the number nine is, the second um, scrum half here. Nice take by Shea Smith. Good ball out to Scannell. Skipping. Larry in for White. Now Madison's in the insert into the line. He's got Chiambella on the wing. It's taken down hard. Control your ball nicely. Cannell, the new scrum half, who I, again, I don't know his name. What do we got here? Well, we have a call there. Uh, the ball? Yeah, yeah. One too many. Too again, many rolls. yeah, one too many rolls. Yeah. Not presenting it immediately. Brown going for the long kick there by Tithani. Now we'll have a throw in by Brown. In Dartmouth territory. We're inside the last two minutes of clock time. We, again, we don't know how much injury time the ref is going to add for the injury in the first half, but we'll see how that shakes out. Really a tale of two halves here, Dan. Dartmouth very dominant in the second half. Yes. All phases of the nice game. to see Dartmouth get a few yeah. of their seniors in here late in the Ball game, too. Scannell having hand trouble hand with it. it um, Playing the first knockdown. Looked like it was knocked on by Brown yeah. in the lineout. Dartmouth's going to get a scrum here. This is a very much changed scrum. I mean, you've got Larry Ann for White and Matt Robinson in the scrums and Shea Smith. And I think everything else, everyone else in the scrum has been changed in the second half here. So you've got five new players in that scrum. And Green Bay, but he's a they're all in different positions too. Oh, Zach went to number eight. Yeah, my bad. Simon, not Zach, Simon, Simon yeah. So just a few, just, just a minute left in this match. Dartmouth with the foot in, in the Brown territory. Ball controlled by Dartmouth. Decent scrum, although with Leonard on. Brown. Yeah. Offloaded the Justin Ziambello. As he's looking for sports. Might help. be an obstruction. Support, obstruction called. That one is the old man. Brown. Opportunity for Brown. Jafani quickly trying to take it. Passing Gives it to his number pointer. six, Bentleski. Recycling the ball through Leonard to Jafani again. Number 12, Ryan Jones on the break, supported by Tondaries. And backward. See if Brown can recycle this ball out. Looks like uh, been poached by Dartmouth, by Dartmouth driving it back. Like good good drive in that ruck by the green. Now here comes Tom. Big Tom Stevenson, freshman from New Zealand. The cap gives the ball to, to Brown, controlled by Dartmouth. Scrum half flings it out, out to, to Madison. Madison. Ooh. Not his best kick today, but nonetheless, the ball taken by forward. Keeling. Well, that might be obstruction as well, but it doesn't seem that the referee might have been blocked off from that. Ball on the deck, picked up by Shockley, Shockley kicks, kicks it out to touch. touch. So we're at full time. That's the there it is. There it is. There it is. 32 points to Dartmouth, three for Brown. Very oh. successful victory for Dartmouth. They're winners of the Ivy League Championship, and we'll move on now into Division One.